Hello everyone, my name is Elvis and welcome to Great Money Matters. In this episode on Working Capital Series, we are going to talk about the cash conversion cycle or as some people may know it as the Working Capital Days. In this video, I'll be bringing together all three equations from previous videos, which include inventory days, receivable days and payable days from the Working Capital Series and showing you some examples on how to measure the cash conversion cycle and hopefully provide a better understanding on how to best manage cash within your business. With that being said, let's get started. So just to recap from previous videos, as you can see here, the three equations which are inventory days, receivable days and payable days. These three variables from the working capital days equations are most commonly shown as the cash conversion cycle. Observing the cash conversion cycle formula, you will notice that inventory days usually is a positive value, which is then added to the receivable days as the combination of these two variables indicate the time the inventory was stored in the warehouse before it was sold to a customer on credit, and then the time it took to receive the funds from the customer. This is preceded by payable days, which is subtracted from the two variables as it has seen as providing a benefit to the business based on the cash being held in the bank account. The higher the payable days, the longer the cash is stated within the business. Let's start with two examples to provide a clearer picture. In the first example, we will see that the values shown are typical of a well-functioning business with 55 days in inventory, 46 days in receivables and 30 days in payables. If you follow the cash conversion cycle equation, this equates to 71 days. This basically represents the time it took for the business to distribute inventory out of its warehouses, receive funds from its customers, and in turn, pay suppliers. Just as a side note, if you observe inventory days and payable days, you will notice in the denominator that cost of goods sold are $10 million, which are the same in both equations. But the difference is that the numerator with average inventory at $1.5 million and average payables at $800,000. It's these two different variables that contribute to the difference in time in relation to days. In addition, if you have purchased inventory at the level stated in the numerator in the above inventory days calculation, you will notice the corresponding payables outstanding at 800,000, indicating we have paid $700,000 in cash, 1.5 million, less 800,000. And what is remaining is the 800,000 in payables shown in the numerator of the payable days calculation. Now onto our next example. You will see an unfavorable situation where our sales have dropped and the corresponding cost of goods sold has reduced as well. And on top of that, economic conditions are putting other businesses in a situation where they need to manage their cash flow to reduce risk. Therefore, our suppliers are asking us to repay for inventory so they can better manage their cash flow issues and mitigate any risk they may experience. Saying that, this is what our new situation looks like, where inventory days is 110, receivable days is at 92, and you will notice the payable days at negative 59 days. The reason for the negative 59, as mentioned, is due to us having to prepay our supplier $800,000 before receiving inventory. This adds to the pressure of managing cash flow. This basically puts us in a situation where our cash, after the calculation is being conducted, is locked away for 261 days, which is almost nine months. And the reason for this, as shown above, is that we have not been performing well in relation to sales compared to the previous example. And we are still maintaining the same level of inventory, accounts receivable with an increased risk of cash flow by prepaying suppliers instead of delaying payment or using a credit facility from our suppliers. I hope this clarified how the cash conversion cycle is calculated and in turn gives you a better understanding of how to analyze and better manage cash flow. Okay, I've got one more thing to show you before you go. Let's move on to an additional point that I'm assuming most people are asking, and that is, Elvis, that's fantastic. Thank you for showing me how long my funds will be locked up for so that I know the amount of days it takes for me to cycle through my cash and receive it. But what is the amount that I need in order to fund working capital? Hmm. Well. In the following example, I will show you using the figures that we already have in the working capital days calculation, you will see 
the required funds necessary to continue with the day-to-day -day operations within your business. As you can see in this example, average inventory of $1.5 million that was taken from our first example from the numerator in the inventory days calculation, followed by average receivable of 2.5 million and average payable of 800,000. If you use the same concept in the cash conversion cycle calculation, you will notice that average inventory plus average receivable less average payables equals working capital in terms of a dollar value. So basically, plug in the numbers from the variables displayed at the top and you will see $1.5 million plus 2.5 million less 800,000 equals $3.2 million in working capital funds locked away for a period of 71 days. Therefore, you can see that $3.2 million worth of funds to support the level of inventory you want to maintain of $1.5 million plus the amount of money customers owe you that you have not received and the amount of money you owe the suppliers for the inventory you have purchased. This is what is required to support your three key items in your business to be able to continue your day-to-day -day operations. Just quickly, to continue on with our final example, remember when economic conditions declined in our second example? Continuing on from that, if you have inventory and accounts receivable at the same level of $1.5 and $2.5 million, but you have prepaid your suppliers to the value of $800,000, then the amount of working capital locked away in a different form other than cash increases by $1.6 million from the 3.2 up to 4.8 million. And the key difference from this example to the previous example is that if you take a look at the equation at the bottom, you would have usually reduced the average payable amount from average inventory and average receivable to obtain your working capital amount locked away. But, because you have prepaid inventory from your suppliers, which cause a negative credit balance in your balance sheet, you now must add the 800,000 to the equation instead of subtracting the amount as we did in the previous example. And the reason for this is that you have prepaid your supplier before receiving the item, and this has converted your liquidity from cash to an alternative asset that you have yet to receive which now adds to the amount of days required at the level of sales maintained to be able to continue your day-to-day -day operations. And that is it. That's pretty much the end of the video. To wrap up the entire series, please take a look at the final three videos on how to manage inventory, accounts payable, and accounts receivable, where I will show you tips and strategies to manage the three key items related to working capital. Thank you, and until next time.